Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Channel Ed Brian Lape Reads. We haven't done a fitness article in a while. I've been doing some other things and a lot of th- stuff. But um, as gyms open up across the country again, there's all kinds of ways, there are all kinds of articles about how to not get sick. But uh, how about not get injured, in particular, when you start getting back into stuff that you haven't done for months? So 14 Secrets of People Who Never Get Injured exercise injuries this is from jen senrich of muscle and fitness.com building a strong foundation is crucial if you want to continue working out at maximum effort and build a bulletproof body i don't know about bulletproof but as it turns out the athletes fitness trainers instructors and gurus we idolize attempt to emulate in gym don't just work incredibly hard on perfecting their physique they also put serious effort towards not getting injured this is this is crucial so you crossfitters please pay attention okay uh, they know that building muscle and endurance takes time and that if you get injured, you're out of the count until you're fully healed. That is true. Nothing like trying to rush back from an injury, re-injuring that, or if it's a weakness that causes something else to get injured and now you've got two serious injuries compounding one another. Yeah, that sucks. To help you get most of out of your fitness regime, we ask these top trainers and athletes to share their best secrets. And hopefully this is not a too long, didn't read type article, but we'll go here. Never jump into a regime head first. Too often people jump into a fitness program going 100, 100 miles an hour right off the bat uh, because they want to f- fit in. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's just skip to the quote. Well, we work out uh, when we work out our heart, lungs, muscles, brain, kidney, skin, face, joints, and entire body have to go into a different state of energy use, explains uh, Ben, um, I guess, Baldro. Uh, owner of Acceleration Fitness in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Muscle that isn't uh, used to moving a certain way is breaking down and your body can't keep up. That leads to injury. Yep. Uh, it's also if you, let's say you're going to go heavy on something and you go way too heavy, right? So you can get an injury that way. Best approach is to ease in, uh, into your new pay, uh, into your own pace and taking your time. It can't all happen at once. Yep. Go slow. And now slow is a relative term here. What's slow for one person is going to be fast for someone else and vice versa. So there you go. Number two, warm up before every workout. Now, uh, this is interesting because a lot of people say, I don't have to warm up. For any activity <clears throat> that stretches the muscles, a proper warm up is essential to prepare the body for what it's going to warm up uh, by increasing blood flow uh, in the extremities. And this doesn't necessarily mean cardio. I know I used to do cardio before I would do a fitness uh, and it really wasted a lot of energy. And then I started doing stuff at the end and then I started doing cardio on different days and I found a much better, uh, uh, you know, just walking and stuff like that. Um, the blood flow includes, so basically, but your warm up should be similar to what you're doing. Okay. If you're going to do, let's say leg cardio, you're going to get on the, uh, uh, stair mat. Well, stair master has an arm thing. Let's say you're doing a chest workout. No, that's where a stair master wear the arms and work their arms a little harder. Not a whole lot harder. We're only talking 10 minutes here. We're not talking an hour and a half. Uh, this blood flow increases soft tissue mobility and the firing battering of the musculature and the arrangement of muscles in your body. So it also depends what you're doing. You know, maybe you do some reps a little bit slower, a little bit lighter weight, uh, or maybe faster uh, with lighter weight. And you're just trying to pump the blood through those muscles that you're, that you're getting. That's, it doesn't necessarily, but it could be. Um, and there's a lot of th- thing about stressing, never increase two variables, uh, during the same workout. Uh, building lasting strength has to be done in a measured and purposeful way, uh, meaning you have to acquire your baseline to move forward and handle more. Okay, so three key variables to keep in mind are frequency, the number of reps, intensity, the, the resistance or poundage, and duration, the number of sets. And I would also add there time under tension, uh, whether that's through you know slow negatives or whatever else that all, that all plays in there. And that, that could be lumped in with under duration too. If you run the frequency would be the mileage, the intensity would be the speed, and the duration would be the number of workouts per week. So there you go. I'm trying to increase uh, too many variables too quickly. Yes, and this can't, you know, you go to the gym, you feel great, and you're like, I'm going to do, you know, five sets of nine instead of five sets of five or whatever, and I'm throwing 300 pounds on. Yeah, that could that could be bad. And, and also, when you do that, you have too many things changing. And so let's say it goes well. What gave you the most benefit, right? Was it more reps? Was it shorter rest? Was it more weight? You don't know. So uh, that can be a, a pain in the butt. Uh, they never forget to stay hydrated before, during, after. This is very important. You know, especially if people work out in the afternoon or evening. Uh, if you've been, you know, barely hydrated all day and then you go and work out, that's going to be a problem. When you stretch, our muscles are basically wringing out the impurities 
from the flu- food and a liquid we'd eat and drink. But if you're dehydrated, our muscles and joints will stiffen up, preventing us. Yeah, this is part of why people are dehydrated and, you know, heat exhaustion, heat stroke, they get cramps, they get all kinds of stuff. Um, and so uh, drinking at least, so this is 16 to 20 ounces of water or sports beverage, at least four, uh, few, four, at least four few hours. What? I think there's supposed to be F-O-R here. I think it's supposed to be for a few hours before F-O-R, not the number four. Three day ounces every 50, 50 minutes during uh, the exercise that lasts, you know, 60 minutes or whatever. Uh, a lot of it just depends. You know, sometimes you just need a few sips of water, especially if you're well hydrated beforehand. Um, I wouldn't drink sports drinks during the day. That's just me. Um, if I was going to do something, there's definitely something without sugar and without sweetener. So if you need something with, say, more salt or more potassium, or like, okay, drink something like that. Uh, but just water tends to be fine. Um, and uh, and then if you work in the same deal, if you work out in the morning like I do, you're going to want to stay hydrated all day so that your your body can recover properly. They don't go anywhere without a foam roller. Now, this one's iffy for me because, I mean, I do use a foam roller, full disclosure. Uh, I'm not a religious fanatic about it, and I know some people that are. But I understand where they're coming from. Uh, there might be a magic bull. There might never be a magic bull in the health and fitness world. So foam rolling and others, self myofascular facial facial uh, release tools might be the closest thing. Well, getting a massage every day sounds amazing. It probably won't fit into most people's budget or, or schedules. Right, that usually takes a while, um, but improves be- uh, muscle tissue quality flow blood and water flow in the muscles yeah basically you're just kind of rolling out everything get the kinks out but uh, that's good they don't repeat the same exercises daily um weekly changes in your exercise uh, are beneficial in allowing your muscles to contract in different positions uh in addition to preventing injury and challenging your body in different ways switching up your aerobic uh activity level is good for your cardiovascular system for example if you're trying to shed weight into treadmill with treadmill workouts, it's a good mix to. Uh, it's a good idea to mix other endurance activities into your regime, such as HIT or at the gym, or incorporating polymetrics into your routine. Yeah, it, basically different ways to get your heart rate up is what they're going after. Instead of doing uh, an in-place lunge uh, like that, what, that you did the day before, try doing a lunge with an added rotation element. Oh, I wouldn't. Um, I don't like rotational exercises. Um, to me, this is a great way to get injured. If you do this, use very lightweight or none. Uh, it, twisting and pulling at the same time is a great way to l- just screw up your lower back. Uh, while adding a dumbbell weight in hand, a, a chiropractor, interesting. And, uh, this not only works, but basically you got to keep your, t- your core nice and tight as you rotate. Uh, they always maintain proper form. This is very important, especially w- in light of that uh, advice. Got to do proper form. Can't leave with the hip. You got to twist properly. Uh, when you're exhausted from the work uh, week and, and the seemingly endless to-do list that's piling up on the smartphone, it can be tempting to take shortcuts now during the work. Don't take shortcuts. If you're easy, as you're executing a squat, for instance, and your knees are constantly falling over your toes, you're putting added strain on your knees. Oh, this is, this is, this is horrible advice, which can lead to, this is, <laughs> um, celebrity trainer, uh, Elizabeth, you've got old information. Okay. What I've noticed with it is, um, especially with low bar, uh, my knees have to go. And that's actually where I have my foot. The more I rotate my foot outward, my toes outward, basically, I should say, um, the, the less pain there is. And, and, and also when I push back to make sure that you at least get the parallel and I'm pushing back through my uh, heels makes, seems to make a huge difference. And I'm constantly correcting knee issues with my clients. So I remind them anytime those knees travel a little too far forward. Okay, that's this is this is stupid advice. Uh, it's muscle fitness. I knew that would be in here somewhere. Um, they still believe in that nonsense. Uh, they also use proper equipment and weights. Okay, this is also important. Uh, don't you know overdo things. Uh, doing a strength exercise improperly can cause strains. Pull. Yeah. Uh, endurance activities such as running, biking, and swimming have simple but essential. See, and I think this person's clients are probably getting more knee injuries from running or jogging than they are from the squats. Um, they don't work through pain. Uh, yeah. Pain, treat. You got to understand what kind of pain you're feeling. Uh, it's one thing if pain is being derived from say a folic acid or not folic lactic acid buildup in the muscles. But if the pain is because a joint is weak or a muscle is weak or overly tired and you're trying to push too hard, 
you better pay attention to that. Now, now I haven't even read what's here, but let's see. If working out is a painful experience, you're not only getting, uh, you're not only doing the exercise wrong, but you're also doing it uh, to burn out or quit. Rather than pushing your body through pain, thinking you're going to gain, use proper techniques. Because again, it's the type of pain. The muscle pain because you've worked out something is far different than it feeling like someone's ripping your arm out of your shoulder. Okay, so pay attention to that. Uh, number 10, I know I'm trying to, I, and I will put the link in the in the description for people who want to read through all these in detail. I just, I didn't want to take forever to get to all this information. When you exercise, your blood pressure rises in order to cope with the increased demands you're placing on your body. So if you're simply uh, stop moving after pushing yourself during a workout, this is the cool down. Uh, but, you know, stop, cool down can, can just mean walking around the gym for 10 minutes, right? It doesn't have to be in any, or just walking home or walking outside or doing a few little stretches. Uh, the best approach is to gradually reduce your exercise intensity, while, uh, which will uh, allow your heart rate to go slowly. It all, a lot of it depends on what you're doing. Um, but, um, you know, your blood vessels to constrict back to their usual size, your blood pressure to normalize. Yep. It could be as simple as walking around. I'll just plop down in a chair. Number 11, they make sure to use full range of motion. Now, this is important, although I think some people overdo the range of motion. They, they're doing too far. Um but and I see this a lot in the squat rack. This also will hurt your knees more than when your your knees traveling past your toes, and that's doing like a third squat or half a squat because then your knees are constantly under tension. So do the full motion because it because um, some do it because they've had knee surgery, but this is no excuse. If you train your body to only do a part of the rep or only halfway down, your muscles will get used to only performing small ranges of motion, and your joints and ligaments will stiffen up. Yep. People tell me, oh, my back, then do something else. Use a wall or, or dial or balance yourself until you go into full range of motion with a movement. Uh, there you go. And number uh, 12, they take rest and recovery days. Absolutely. Um, you know, you got to back off. Maybe it's a day or two, depending on what you're doing. Often workout enthusiasts get caught up in the workout recovery workout cycle. This, uh, this might sounds this might sounds like a good thing, but the whole point of working out isn't only to recover uh, from it so that you can work out again. It's to recover, then adapt to get stronger and have better performance. Yep. And and part of it, I would add, uh, take note, because you know, maybe um, part of this is like a deloading week, depending on what you're doing, where you do the same exercise, but you do it, you know, maybe 40% less uh, weights or, you know, maybe if you're running and you're trying to, you know, whatever your, your goal is, you want to run three miles a day or something. So you, you've been doing a mile for a while and maybe you take a, a you can only do three quarters of a mile. And then the next week you go to like a mile and a quarter, a mile and a half or something like that. Once you get through those intense weeks, uh, now have a deload week or recovery. That's just like I said, uh, it just depends. Depends on what you're trying to accomplish, what your goals are, and just adjust. Just listen to your body and understand and, and, and do some research, right? Do some research based on your body type, your age, your, your health level um your fitness level and find out what when is a good time you know maybe uh the deload week is is earlier uh in the beginning and then over time it's you know maybe it's like every third week and then it's after you've adapted maybe it's every fourth week um maybe it's less than a week maybe it's, you take three days off and all you do is walk around or something and maybe do light stretching you do nothing at all it just depends on your goals and what your body does they sleep a minimum of seven hours a night um, except, uh, Arnold who says sleep faster and sleep six. When you work out, you put your muscles through stress. Sleep is very important to get rid of those toxins. It's also very uh, important to mental health, uh, reset your metabolism during sleep. Growth hormones stimulate muscle growth, aid in cell re uh, reproduction, cell regeneration, and, and regulation of the body's metabolism to literally repair any damage. So now, and the last one, they eat a healthy and well-balanced diet. People get caught up on this thinking they, oh, they got to have fiber. They got to have this. It all depends on your body type. Your, your fitness goals, you know, if you got weight loss goals, you're trying to lose body fat, all that comes into, you know, what's your metabolism like? What can you tolerate? Um, this is pretty good. Uh, I like that the, the, the salmon, which is pretty dense in protein, is a bigger part of this. This is, most people eat too, too little actual protein um, and too much other crap. But uh, one easy way to make sure you're recovering from con is consuming the right foods. Make sure you're eating adequate amounts of calories, protein, carbs. Again, and I know people that are nearly carb-free that run marathons, so it, it just depends. Fat to fuel your workout, and, and listen, you know, eating eight, eating carbohydrates during long endurance cycles or exercises is essential to preventing the body and mind from be, breaking down, plus protein is required to repair muscle damage. 
And uh, I know a lot of people think they eat too much protein. I, I would imagine most people don't eat enough. I like this. It's kind of like this little corn salsa, green beans. So you've got some fiber and a little bit of starch, uh, new potatoes. And it looks like it's got some, um, you know, they're grilled. So there we go. So there we go. Uh, other than the lady talking about them, the, the, the myth of the uh, squats in the knees, I would say that's good. Let's see, this person's doing a high bar squat. They got their butt back and their knees, of course, don't go past. But um, this is a, but they're at parallel, so that's fine. And everybody's a little bit different. My femurs are long compared to the rest of my leg. Um, so my knees actually travel further because of that. Uh, someone that's a bit more proportionate, <laughs> okay, um, uh, their knee may not travel as long. But my femurs are long as a, as a proportion to my body uh, length, my leg length. So, but everybody's a little bit different. Some people have shorter femurs. That's fine. So just know, listen to your body and adjust. And, you know, and this is the kind of information, especially if you work at a gym with, uh, that has personal trainers and maybe even a registered dietitian. This is the higher level of information that they're, that that's worth. Even if you have to pay for their time to review some things, this is the good way to do it. Having them give you a base workout. I mean, when you're starting, you don't know anything, that's fine. And then do some research, kind of doing your own and then kind of get feedback from them. Hey, here's what I've been doing, or here's what I'm planning to do. Here's where I am because you, you gave, here's what I want to do for the next six weeks. Uh, and they, they really enjoy being able to use their higher level information as opposed to trying to show someone yet again, how to do a, a barbell curl. So there you go. What do you think of these 14 secrets? Do you like them? Not like, and let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for sharing and we will see you. Goodbye. my volume oh that's why the regular volume is way up okay three two one hello that's horrible start again three two one